Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Um, we've covered the relationships between entities, the one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-one, and uh, many-to-many in our previous few tutorials. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to look at a few concepts that are common across uh, most of these relationships. And uh, you know, we'll we'll cover a lot of concepts. These are the miscellaneous concepts which kind of fit at different places. So. Um, just wanted to take a separate tutorial and cover some of these concepts here. So, okay, let's go. So the first one is, uh, the first one that I wanna cover is this uh, annotation here. Let's take this example. Say I have a many-to-many -many here and um, let's assume this was a one-to-many. Or uh, let's take the vehicle object and uh, take this as a many-to-one, say. Okay, I'm gonna remove this. Now, and this was, this would be a private user details user. Okay, now assume that this car is not, uh, this vehicle is not having an owner. Okay, they do, I mean, this vehicle is not yet rented or not yet purchased, so there's no user for this vehicle. So now what would happen if you had a many to one association here and say you had the getters and setters for get, get user and set user. Now imagine if your code would get the vehicle and try to do a get user and there was no association for this vehicle in the user uh, mapping, say there was no user for this vehicle, then Hibernate would throw an exception. It would say, hey, I don't have a user for this vehicle. So a get user for a vehicle object which does not have a user would throw an exception. So there is a way we can suppress this exception so that uh, you know it does not hibernate does not come up with an error every time there you know the data is not there and if it's a common situation for the data not to be uh, present at any point of time then you can prevent all these exception errors coming up by using an annotation here called at not found. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm saying if this is not found, if the user is not found, then what to do? Okay, so if I import this, you can see this is a org.hibernate.annotations. So this is not a JPA standard. This is a feature that Hibernate provides, but I have found this very handy, especially if you're working on old systems where you didn't actually have data from the scratch that's supplied by Hibernate. It was, it was some legacy data and you might not have all the relationships available. So in that case, what you do is you can use this at not found annotation to treat, to handle situations where there is no such relationship available. So what you can do is at not found, you will have to give what is called as an action property. So if the, you know, the relationship is not found, then what you need to do, you need to do this action equals, there is a not found action enumeration dot ignore. So not found action has this uh, ignore enumeration. So what happens is if your uh, user is not found, then you're telling Hibernate to just ignore it, not throw an exception. So this is something that I found very handy and uh, just wanted to, you know, uh, throw this concept in there so that if you feel that you might, you know, you might come across such not found exceptions and you want to handle it gracefully, this is one way you can you can actually handle that. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about are the collection objects that Hibernate uh, supports. So Hibernate has its own internal data types that it maps to for uh, the collection objects that you're creating, and there are a few semantics for collections that uh, that are you know available in Hibernate. So the first semantic is the bag semantic. Hibernate has a bag kind of a collection uh, object that it supports. So what a bag means is, you know, you know it doesn't, it's it's uh, similar to, a, you know, a real life bag. It doesn't matter how you put things inside it. You can, you can, you know, put things into a bag in any order. You can retrieve it in any order. So that is a bag semantic that Hibernate supports. So you can implement a bag semantic by using either a list or an array list. And uh, similar to a bag, we also have a bag with an ID. Again, this is something that we can use with a list or an array list. So a list or an array list will have an index property. So what you're doing is you can, uh, you know, pull up items depending on the ID that you're, uh, you're supplying. 
So the next one is uh, a list semantic. So this is again a list or an array list. It's a, it's the same thing. The only difference that uh, that is applicable from a list or a bag is that a list can be ordered. You can have a sorted list, whereas a bag, you know, it really doesn't matter which order in which you get the data. The next one is a set semantic. We've seen a set. Um, this is similar to a set data type in Java, so I'm not going to go into much details. And then uh, finally, a map. Again, this is similar to a map uh, data type of Java. Okay, you don't have to actually worry about uh, the semantics. Uh, what 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 usually happens is you'll be working on one of these um, data types here. You'll probably have a list of objects or a you know a set of objects or a map of objects. So what's happening is Hibernate is using one of these semantics behind the scenes in order to maintain the collection. Okay, so the final thing that I want to talk about is uh, something called as a cascade. This is applicable to all the relationships, be it uh, one to one, one to many, many to one, or uh, many to many. So we'll have a look at what cascade means here. Let me just undo the changes that I've done. Okay, and I'll save this. And user details, yeah, we haven't modified this. So. Yeah, um, what does cascade mean? Say, for example, I have this, uh, you know, this program where I have a user and um, let's say this user has uh, 10 vehicles or something like that. So I will have all the 10 vehicle objects and I will assign those vehicle objects to the, to the user. So now if I have to save the user, so what I'd have to do is I'd have to first do a session.save of user and I'll have to do a session.save of all the vehicles of the user. Say I have 10 vehicles or 50 vehicles. Uh, saving all of them is, is going to make the code look messy and it's also a pain. So it, it's not just for saving. Say for example, you delete the user and you want to go ahead and delete all the all the vehicles associated with the user. We haven't seen how to delete a uh, value. We'll have a look at that subsequently, but you know, you should note that whatever operation you're doing for the user, you will have to do all the operations, uh, you know, you'll have to do the same operation for all the vehicles. So a save or an update or a, you know, creation will affect all the vehicles. So you'll have to pass all these vehicle objects to a session.save. So there is a way to avoid this and uh, you can use something called as a cascade. So I have uh, the user details class and uh, the vehicle class here. This is the same uh, two classes that we've been looking at in the previous tutorials. Uh, the change that I've made in the user detail classes, I've changed it to a one to many. This was a many to many, uh, you know, at the end of our previous tutorial. So I've changed this to one to many and uh, I have a vehicle collection inside the user object. And in the vehicle, there's no backwards reference. There's no inverse reference. Uh, from the vehicle, you cannot go to a user. It's just from the user to the vehicle. So this is a one-to-many relationship, which is which is a classic scenario to study uh, the cascading that we are about to learn. So we have this uh, vehicle collection. We have uh, implemented an array list here. Now, what I want to do is, when I want to create, um, here is our, um, you know, the test class that we run, uh, we have a user object here and we have two vehicle objects. So we assign the vehicles to this user. So uh, car and Jeep are the two vehicles that have been assigned to the, to the vehicle collection in the user. So this collection here will have two values, which are the two vehicles, car and Jeep. Now, when I save this, I am saving the user, the vehicle one and vehicle two, which is, you know, the uh, car object as well as the Jeep object. So what happens if I just save the user? Is, isn't that enough? Let's let's remove this, these two lines. So the user has a reference to both the car object and the Jeep object, but I'm not explicitly saving the car object and the Jeep object. Now what happens if I run this? Let's uh, save and run. Let's see what happens. So here you can see there's an exception. It says object references an unsaved transient instance. So it's asking us to save the transient instance instance before flushing. So what this is saying is you have an object that you're trying to save, but this object references another object that you have not saved. So we need to make sure that those objects are saved as well. 
So this is the problem. Why does Hibernate not automatically save it? We know that this user has two references. One is a vehicle and a vehicle too, which is the car and the Jeep objects. Now, why does Hibernate not save it directly? That's because these are also entities. Uh, this vehicle is an entity. This vehicle is again another entity. Now, Hibernate cannot make that assumption and uh, save the entity because you know that might be something that you would want to do differently. You know, sometimes you wouldn't want to save these entities automatically. You would want to have control over it. Now, if it were a collection object, let's say this weren't an entity, it was just a value type, then this vehicle would, the whole purpose of this vehicle would be for this user. So it makes sense when the user is saved, you save that vehicle also. But since it's not a value type, it's an entity, these two vehicles have a life of its own. It's not really bound by the user. So you wouldn't want an automatic save or an automatic any operation to happen. So that's the reason why Hibernate gives uh, this the benefit of the doubt and then it does not do any automatic saving. It, uh, you know, it wants us to specify when and how this needs to be saved. So which is fine, we, we did this earlier. So what we did was we did a session.save of both the vehicles. Now the problem is if you have a huge list of objects here, you would have to do a session.save of all of them and that's a pain. So that's what we're gonna avoid by using the cascade. So what I do is in the user details, wherever I have this reference, you know, I'm saying this is a one-to-many relationship with the vehicle. So here I will have to tell Hibernate saying, hey, I do not want to save each and every object here. If you come across this collection and you have unsaved objects, when I'm doing a save for this user class, go ahead and save all the objects in this collection as well. So that's what I want to say. And I say that using the cascade. So the one-to-many annotation has a property called cascade equals and again, there is a there is an enumeration that supplies the values. So I have cascade type dot. Okay, so here you see there are a few options. You have uh, detach, merge, persist, refresh, and remove. We will look at all the other things later, but uh, right now we want the cascading to happen on save. When you want to save the user, it has to save the corresponding vehicle instances. So I will have to select this persist. So persist tells Hibernate that if you see any new entities inside this, uh, you know, the vehicle collection, which has not been saved, when the user is being saved, go ahead and save them as well. So this is what the cascade.persist means. Okay, now we are actually all set to run this. But uh, there is one other small change that we'll have to make. Uh, I'll make the change now and we'll learn a bit more about this in the later tutorials. So here, where we have a session.save, instead of a dot save, I will call another method of the session, which is persist. Now a persist kind of does the same thing as what a save does, but there are a few differences. And uh, this is something that uh, we'll explore in the upcoming tutorials. But for now, just make this change. This change session.persist ties in with this change that we have made to cascade persist. So whenever a persist happens, a cascade needs to happen. So that's what we are doing here. We are saying, hey, Hibernate, persist this collection when you're persisting this entity. and uh, when we are actually saving this, we are calling a session dot persist. That, that ensures that this user is persistent. So again, we will look at the difference between uh, persist and save later on. But for now, let's make this change and uh, save and run this. And there you go. You do not see that error anymore. And even though we are not saving the vehicle objects, it is inserting values into the vehicle and uh, it's also inserting the mappings. So this um, cascade type that persists is one of the different cascade types. Now you can have a cascade type dot uh, remove, which you know does a cascade for uh, delete operations. And uh, again, merge and detach are things that we we're going to explore later when we you know when we look at the life cycle of. Um, of entity objects. That's when we're gonna learn a bit more about persistent refresh as well. Um, and the final thing is, if you want all persistence to happen, I mean, everything to happen cascaded, all operations need to be cascaded, whether it's a creation or a deletion or uh, updating, anything like that. If you want all these to apply, then you can choose a cascade type dot 
all. So what this makes sure is that instead of specifying each and every individual operation, you say cascade everything. So no matter what happens to the user entity, uh, the same thing gets propagated to the vehicle entities as well. So the cascade type dot all is kind of like a shortcut so that you don't have to enter all the individual cascade types.